الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين الحمد لله وإذ فضل فل سبحانه وتعالى We are living this life <coughs> this very short life which is not real because tests and ibtala and examination are engineered they are set by someone they are not the real thing duniya kyunki azmaish hai duniya ki zindagi aur azmaish aur imtihan wo sahi haqeeqat nahi hoti balki wo ek پلان کی ہوئی منصوبہ بندی کے تحت سوال لائے جاتے ہیں اس میں سو مینی آف ایس بیکم سویڈ اینڈ افیکٹیڈ بیکاز وی تھنک دس از اے ریئل لائف دس از اے ریئل سچویشن اٹس لائک سم ون تھنکس دیٹ دی ایگزامینر ہو از ایگزامنگ دیم He is creating false situation, an artificial situation just to test the response of people. A driving instructor, when he says, stop here, there, it is a situation which he creates. When anyone <coughs> is tested, the situation is artificially created. It's not the real thing. Uh, the real matter comes after. even when army police force they are tested for examination they are already planned the situation is created exercises are made the questions are formed by someone if someone think it is real situation it is not it tests are planned and pre-planned and they are artificial in a sense they are not the real thing the real thing comes after so many of us become affected by this world and this life when they think this is the real life <coughs> this is the real situation it's not a real everything is fixed everything is planned and every situation is engineered to examine your and mind response is no nothing is happening in reality me that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this dunya is wa mal hayatu dunya illa mata'ul ghurur this dunya is not but a deception it's a, not the real matter the real matter is when uh, after the exam you have results and you f- face failure that is real that's been to be before permanently if you are successful in the test then forever <coughs> until you live you got that degree whatever you have but the exam time is not a real it's engineer it's made up questions people who are trained in, as i say in army in sports in cricket in football in boxing when they are being 
tested by their teachers or their academies or they are doing just actually a, a, a testing match, that's not the real thing. The real thing comes after. So this is what few people know and it sinks in the minds and hearts of few people and they tend to take it real so they become angry, they become happy if they are given a blessing, they think it's real. It's not, it is a test, it is an artificially created situation <coughs> just to see your response. If a musibah comes, that's not a real thing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can clear you, can cure you, can remove at any time. So it's not the real thing. The real matter is going to become akhirah. The pain there is real. There is no end to it and it's real. The pleasure there is real. There is no test or anything. It is going to be forever. This is something which, as I said, few people understand. Both come low. اس چیز کو سمجھتے ہیں کہ یہ دنیا حقیقت نہیں ہے یہ دنیا دھوکہ ہے یہ بنائے ایک دھوکہ ایک ڈراما ایک امتحان ایک ازمائش ہے اس لیے یہاں کچھ مل جانا بھی کوئی حقیقت نہیں یہاں کچھ نہ ملنا بھی حقیقت نہیں بلکہ وہ امتحان ہوتا ہے ازمائش ہوتی ہے لیکن حقیقت کی دنیا حق اور سچ جو ہمیشہ کے لیے ہوتا ہے وہ آخرت جنت اور دوزخ کی کامیابی اور ناکامی ہے اس لیے اس دنیا کے کامیابی کو بھی کوئی زیادہ خوش اور سیریس نہیں لینا چاہیے اور اس دنیا کی ناکامی کو بھی سیریس نہیں یہ آرٹیفیشل سیچویشن ہے یہ فوراں گزر جاتی ہے آخرت کی کامیابی اصل کامیابی وہ ناکامی اصل ناکامی ہے اس لیے اس معاملے میں بندے کو سیریس لینا چاہیے اپنے معاملات کو and that is how اولیاء اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی and the صحابہ اکرام and the انبیاء اکرام they lived this life and this month especially the month of suffer many great personalities came and lived successfully on this face of the earth and many great personalities they left this world and became successful. So that is why we should look at them, we should ponder the, uh, their life because they fa same, face the same situation as us, same illnesses, same difficulties, rather more of them. So there is no situation which we are facing which they didn't face. So there is no pain, no pleasure, the same things were there, only the colors and intensities of it uh, changes. So Sayyidina Abdulaziz Dabbaq Rahmullah came into this world this month, Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu, uh, Sayyidina Ali Hajwari Data Ganybakhsh Rahmahullah, he passed away. Imam Ahmad Rida Barelvi Rahimahullah, he also uh, passed away. Hazrat Sayyidina Mujaddadi Al Fisani, Shaykh Ahmad Sarhandi Rahimahullah, great wali um, of this Ummah, he passed away. And many others, Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubair, Sayyidina Asma bin Abi Bakr, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Many, many great. So, women have their example, men have their examples. Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabba, Quddus Sirul Aziz, is a special kind of wali that who we can say that is more like the wali which is mentioned in Surat Yasin in the beginning of Surat Yaseen, a wali is mentioned <coughs> who was worried about his nation and his people even after his death, after he departed to Barzakh. 
So it's Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bagh, as it's mentioned in Ibris, that in Barzakh as well, he's worried about this Ummah and he's teacher of many awliya and sulaha and arifi, not only in this world, but in that world he teaches as well. In Barzakh people, angels, malaika, awliya, they benefit from him because that is a world, the marifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the marifa of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never ends uh, by the wonders of this dunya are so much that they don't seem to come to an end. What about actually the, the creator and the best of the creator and the best of the creation he created? Uh, especially I would like to relay some teachings of the Mashaykh because Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu he as I mentioned Hal min nasiri yansuruni that last message he left that if I am going if there is anyone to help me meaning now the responsibility of sharing this message carrying on lies on everyone so similarly Sayyidina Abdulaziz the Baagh rahmahullah mentioned that, that to benefit from the majalis of nasiha and majalis of dhikr which are done here which uh, however they are done with whomever they have done that people who come they will benefit and people who don't come they won't benefit so try to see that who you really do come for and not to focus on where the majlis something good is happening and who is conducting and one should look at what teaching the teachings are of mashayikh and of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then a person should participate otherwise they are going to suffer themselves sayyidina abdul is the bas rahmanullah said that one can and should utilize every inch of their body, mind, heart towards the and from the gatherings of Tariqai Muhammad, the prophetic gathering where the matters of Nasiha uh, are given. And he said, when Ken Adab, he particularly mentioned, he said, when a captain of a certain team, ship, or a team is fallen down, the team works extra hard and be very vigilant on their opponents and act and become active and in action in order to protect their team and team members. Similarly, he is referring to that now we need to be more careful. As the Rasulullah system departed, we now become more active and more vigilant that when physically he was it was a different kind of protection although spiritually the blessing then for you that of Rasulullah remains but we are talking about the physical similar when Imam Hussain the captain of the team of that time was there that he was taking matters in his own hand but once he left then people should take it more serious like his son Imam Zain al Abedin shoulder the responsibility the women even came into when they saw there's no men the women came into action Sayyidah Zainab gave da'wa to Yazid in the Darbar uh, Sayyidah Zainab uh, because she was the elderly from them Imam Zainab Abedin was young <coughs> so she took her responsibility so when they thought there is now need even the women who never spoke in public, never were seen in public, no one saw them and they never came out of the house without a dire need. Now they are standing in limelight, actually in front of tyrant and all these evil people. But now they know that Rasulullah is physically not there, Imam Hussain is not there, the brother, her father Sayyidina Ali, Karram Allah Wajul Kareem is not there, so she's actually took this on herself which is very very difficult matter so this is a lesson for us who we are men we have that courage we have 
that facility, at least we are men. And if we are shy to give dawa to people in the street or somewhere, or we are shy and so, so much, this is shaitanic shyness. This is shaitanic modesty. When you are shying away from truth, this is shaitanic. He shied away from prostrating in front of Sayyidina Adam al Islam. That is shaitanic act when you don't do something which is divinely instructed and say, I am shy, I don't feel like, I know. That is shaitanic idea. When divine command is given, then no shyness. Any shyness comes is shaitanic. That shyness is prophetic, which is in order to, to go towards sins when you are shy, shy, to go towards evil, to act evil when you are feeling shy or some hesitant. That is the prophetic, actually, modesty and shyness and haya. This is not haya, I can't do beyond, no, 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 brother, I, I am shy. I can't take this responsibility, I'm shy. This is shaitanic shyness. This is shaitanic. So a person should be very clear about that. This is, there is no goodness. You are on the footsteps of shaitan. If brother says, someone says, now you do this bayan. See the Zainab had this, she's a woman. As I say, they never came out to, of their house. And now standing in the court where evil people, the tyrants, evil rulers, and the gangsters are standing. Midst of them, she gave khutbah. Khutbah means actually da'wa towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, towards the message of Sayyidina Imam Hussain. Although her situation was very, very, heads of Imam Hussain and his brothers were there. And our brothers and many sisters, oh, no, 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 I feel shy. You know, I can't do this bayan. I can't do this pee. I can't go to give da'wa. I can't ask someone to help matters for deen, um, know that this is shaitanic uh, footsteps, footing you are on, not the prophetic. The prophetic footing is different, is that when a matter is to be done regarding deen, throw shyness and hesitancy and bin and actually just jump into, because that is paradise, that is heaven, that is going towards the prophetic feet. Uh, so one should know that actually this is the, this situation. So Sayyidina Imam Hussain when the, her, the, uh, his sister took it more seriously, Imam Zain al-Abedin, who were few people left, they took on themselves. So similarly, we should take on ourselves when we see our Mashaikh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Baal passed away, other pious people are passed away, you are teachers, anyone who is teaching you, me or you, anyone else, if they go away, then you should become more active. You should know that the house is empty now, the garden which they used to look after is empty. Now we should water the garden. Now we should look after the trees. And if that garden is becoming dried, the majalis are becoming empty, and you are lazy to even attend, then know that you have no sincerity. You are doing it for someone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should really think about that who really who you are worshipping and who you were doing all this. Because a person who is a worshipper of Allah, Allah is never absent from anywhere or anything. His knowledge, his wisdom, his qudra. And he said, Wa huwa ma'akum. He is with you. Aina ma kuntum wherever you may be so. So this is that's, that's what Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabai is saying, that when a captain of certain team is fallen down, so if you are Rasulullah Sallallahu the Sahaba has gone, Ambiya, Awliya, Sulaha, at their time, now existingly you have a father, now you are responsible to come, you are a teacher, I myself are doing khidma, Whatever, if I am not here, go, gone somewhere, now that's what Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al is referring to. The team works extra hard and very vigilant on their <coughs> opponents and act and action. And they should become active and take action in order to protect their team members. Similarly, when your captain of the team is not around, you should be extra vigilant on your amal and your gathering. That is the first thing which he mentioned. Secondly, he said, give more effort, put more effort 
in intention and in towards majalis and attending majalis regarding regardless of who is the majlis conducted by if it is done in a good way under instruction or a person is doing something good it's regardless of who is the majalis actually conducted by number three work for deen does not need to be posed just because of a person he's there or not rasulullah sallallahu passed away prepared uh, preparation but he says the work of deen should not stop actually of me going but now he the sahaba ikram became more active the places which they didn't go they went now actually the places the sacrifice which they didn't make they made them now so work together and help each other to bring each other's gathering uh, to other gathering first try their best to attend they can uh, I mean this is because the gatherings are not really for you meaning to attend that should be out of question that a person a team member is playing that should be out of question yes he should bring others to also benefit from it that is where the task is because going or not going if you're fighting on that level then you have really you are on borderline you are fairly as though you are coming first time it's as though you never came that's uh, that's the situation a team member who's a, a player they are always there actually or the spectators they come sometime they don't come so this should not be seen so work of the does not be posed just because anyone uh, your a person a scholar teacher or someone head of some department or whatever of the, is not with you this is being pathetic also another uh, adab you mentioned uh, work together and help each other to bring each other and others to the gathering the first yourself and then others actually because it's as though it is a treasure where others can be fed so you bring them so that you they can be fed they can be changed as well and if you yourself are struggling to opening the shop this is majalis are like shops if the person who have who own shop or who is a worker they the workers are not coming and they are coming late to the shop or the restaurant what to say about the customer the real purpose was not the workers are there that should be out of question the real purpose was actually to bring more customers so that they are there and encourage customers to come so that the shop they benefit from the food or shop items and they actually prosper or they uh, benefit in a way so similarly majalis zawiyas masajids are like the shops of akhirah the real the worker the people who are already uh, in the path and have uh, of doing work of rasulullah so they are like workers they should be out of question they are not there or not but rather they should worry how much 10 customers 10 people 10 thirsty people 10 people who are need 20 people we are going to bring or not that is what is saying abdul aziz the bag is going to and if the person is saying okay i can listen to uh, majalis of beyonds of recordings or actually online or anything they are broadcasted for people really who are uh, who have not come like women who are ill and able to travel not for those who are lazy because they are going to actually uh, be affected by that and once when you are at the gathering have your hearts open have your hearts open open to make or make yourself believe that is as though your first gathering when that's how a person benefits from the first the gatherings of knowledge and the siha. When you go, you imagine and think that this is your first, because it is your first, this moment, this day is not never going to come back. On, for example, 23rd or Safar, for example, if this majlis is taking place, then this is 23rd, Fasr came, uh, Safar of 1438, Hijrah came first time, it's the first time, and it's never going to come again. So don't be deluded in the sending that's a continuous thing. That is in boxes. One box uh, never comes again. It's a new box every day. So you should feel that way as well, that it is your first 
this day and age, it is the first one. Uh, that you are about to meet uh, the, any person who wants to you consult regarding the path, like a, a teacher, a consultant, or do mashwara with an alim, or with a wali, or with the one's teacher, is for the first time, that you are about to meet them first time, imagine the feelings, how one feels. There's a nervousness, there's a humbleness, there's shyness, there's this. And number third one, you do not know anyone, think that nor you have any responsibility to play, play such actually. In a meaning, if you are attending, for attendance, this should be, it's majlis is for you, that you should pay attention to uh, the majlis, unless you have a responsibility and rule, you attend for that as well. And the fourth one, he said, for attending majlis, you are in a place, think that's an alienated place. Think that it is a place spiritually, like Rasulullah said, that when you pass the gardens of Jannah, take your share from that, for the fruits or so. So meaning these are majalis of Jannah. You are, imagine you are in a place that is alienated, that is high. How do you feel when you go to strange places and are lost? When little help is given, one is very much appreciated. And number seven, <coughs> the adab, let your mind be free from people uh, that hurt you, humiliated you, and affected you. Meaning don't actually tarnish the benefit of the majalis to remind yourself of those people. So any, if you've been humiliated, if you've been affected, if you've been hurt, forget. Your, your, let your mind be free from it. Let your mind go where it wants to go and let it flow. Meaning, where it wants, meaning to actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's closeness, to the Jannah, to a place where no one hurts you, to a place where no one humiliates you, a place where no one actually abandons you, appreciates you. Every second, every thought of you, every feeling of you is taken care of. Think about that place and that personality who does that. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in akhirah. Number eight, let lose your organ, meaning free your organs to travel towards the Lord of the worlds, as if though you are resigning them from your body and leaving them from your body in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's as though you are leaving them, cutting them away, and it's as though you're giving them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a way of doing, achieving martyrdom, shahada, that when your physical body is hurt and cut, that is a way. But there is another way, actually, of jihad al akbar, and to do is to, they are with you, but you give them as though, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you become one of those persons about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I become his eyes with which he sees. I become his hand with which he hears. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now he's not his, he's given it to me. Meaning, used under my command, however I want to use. His wealth is mine, his uh, body is mine, his time is mine. So, actually, this is what Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al Rahmanullah say. Number nine, if, imagine every atom, <coughs> every inch, every atom, every cell of your body is remembering the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beauty, majesty, and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Try to involve all your mind, heart, body, actually. Like we sometimes we give ourselves to pleasure. Someone is watching movie, they are so much captivated that it's as though all their body, mind, heart is there. Come on. They can't even listen. They become unattentive. They become absent from surrounding. surroundings. They are so much. When a person is in pleasure, ecstasy, eating, he just wants to pay attention towards the enjoyment. So that is how you should be in the majalis. Uh, number 10, lastly, he said, imagine and with firm conviction and think that you are the most worst of the servants in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then no one and nothing else is below than yourself. Meaning actually, because why? That's reality because Allah has not decided, meaning, 
has not informed yet actually who is low and who is high. So a person is as though low. You don't know who actually. So consider yourself, you are undecided. It's like um, some people are brought to prison or um, they, are, they have actually, yet the trial have to be taken. But there is a charge on all of them. They shouldn't decide between themselves, no, oh, I will get free, I will get ten years, you are going to get five years. You don't know what the judge is going to do. It is foolishness that before going for the trial, before going to judge, okay, yes, we did participate, you did more. It is the judge to decide what the witnesses say and what the judge says, that is. That judgment day, your trial has not happened yet. Our trial not happened yet. Our trials have not, the witnesses have not appeared. The judge has not issued the final judgment. So imagine that you are doomed, except actually if the judge have mercy upon you, uh, otherwise. Uh, but this is a judge who knows every action, every motive of every action, and every thought, and every trait, and every feeling in you which ever came, and every quality of the heart and every thought of the heart and mind and every action not only but every motive of that action and every thought. So if, if one million thoughts led to one action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't know but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that where it started from, where it ended and what thoughts process this person came through doing this actually. You might yourself be knowing only one or two thoughts or events before this action. But Allah is aware of the chain of events from your, when you were Bali and before up to now what's happening, while you are doing something. All the motives, all the chain reaction and things actually. So going towards in the presence of such a person anything can happen. Especially we know our shortcomings in our thoughts, our feelings, our minds and heart. So there's no way one can and be, you know, judge oneself or others actually, one, one never knows that. Anyway, these were the, some of the adab which Sayyidina Abdul Aziz mentioned regarding the majalis and regarding how you should conduct yourself until the day of judgment, anyone who, the day of Qiyamah, it doesn't matter who is, Ambiya came, they have de physically departed, Sahaba Ikram, Awliya, Sulaha, but Allah is still here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no change to him. There is no, no time pa passes. As someone said, that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is out of this. He is the creator of time. He is the creator of place. He is the creator uh, of uh, everything. So he is beyond that. Nothing affects him. We can't imagine about him. He is the creator of this earth, time and space uh, thing. So our mind even, so, like one person was saying that we came into existence coincidentally and it's just random. So, the random thing, so the other person said, even then your this thought might is unreliable if it is just created by random things. Actually, what you are saying is all questionable. Because if it is all just chemical reaction, then something was triggered. So, all this logic and things, that is questionable, that should... That is also a process of uh, result of some random action. So even what you are saying is question. There is no reliability upon that as well because that's from coming from that brain which just actually came out of nowhere randomly. So we don't know even what you are saying. The logic you are saying can be right or wrong or anything like this. So anyway, Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bar Rahmanullah. Further, he, another occasion he mentioned about his birth. He said, celebrating my birthday is by celebrating my way, and our way is the way of the Prophet ﷺ, the Sunnah way. So it's a celebration, a person, how does a person celebrate? There is a way people have cakes, they have many other things, uh, they do bring, they do certain acts, they sing certain songs. So he's saying the Sunnah is also name of actions. The actions are done, that is the celebration of our birth, really. Because in, the people come, they sing, they give gifts, 
So these all actions, they give gifts, the person that congratulates and things there. So a birthday celebration consists of actions and he said our birthday also have actions and the name of those actions is the sunnah. If a person does that, he is celebrating that. That is the way. It is not just one day of celebration and then ignore the rest 364 days or 354. But rather do something that is continuous daily, even if that is a small uh, atom of air. Some people would uh, splash everything in one day and by next day they are celebrating it in a, a devilish way. So he said some people are very eager, they'll do one like the, they'll do maulid or anything of pious people of Ambiya Ikram, but that day or after the day, they are, the very people they are doing, they're living their life in a devilish way. So it's as though they're celebrating the maulid of awliya Allah and the Prophet one day and 364 they are celebrating the maulid or actually the, the devilish ways. So that is quite actually a strain. If one truly desires to remember me and celebrate my life, then uh, they should do four things. <coughs> they, should, they should be steadfast upon their own personal journey. That is, he said that if someone wants to be specific and celebrate my birthday, and this is month of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabar, they should be steadfast upon their own personal journey. Number two, applying the teachings into their lives and not just in their, uh, not to leave that in their books. So a personal journey, one should continue traveling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because a personal journey is not towards Allah azza wa jal only because once you are traveling towards Allah azza wa jal, you are traveling towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because that is a way of his meeting him. If you are traveling that way, you are meeting, you are traveling to, towards meeting Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabba and Awliya Allah and uh, Anbiya Ikram and Siddiqeen. So that is, you, it is strange that you like person, you're celebrating, but you are not traveling towards them. You don't want to go and meet them. Number two, say apply the teachings into your life. Trans let, let them come out of the books into your life. Let them be translated into your life. As someone said, can you tell me the very uh, best translation of Quran. He said the best translation of Quran is when Quran is translated into your life. Best translation we can not only say, okay, people have done translation, that person have done translation. Translation meaning transferring the meaning, actually. Trans so the person who does trans from Arabic, he has done brought into Urdu or English. He has changed, he's brought into a new language. So you see, the best translation is when the Quran which is there is translated into your life and in your action. That is the best translation, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves as well. Uh, number three, no matter what a person faces or feels, they should remain neutral on the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, illness, other things, difficulties, pleasures, happiness, joy, occasions of joy, they all come. So whatever a person faces, they should remain neutral, meaning that should not be questioned, that should not be harmed. It is um, a person that they, they must do that. It's like a person have need, no matter what happens, a person have to eat, a person have to drink, a person have to uh, go to toilet, he has to attend certain things, he have to breathe. No matter you are how much, how much in problem or in agony or bad news you are hearing, but does that person stop breathing? How much joy you have, you still are breathing. So it's like breathing the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, and the way of Rasulullah sallallahu is more precious than breathing because if your breathing goes you only lose this life and if that goes you lose all your five lives the life of alami arwa the life of alami dunya the life of alami barzakh the life of day of judgment and the life of akhirah if that goes your all lives are gone 
if this goes only your physical uh, self are gone but you are living hmm. number four <coughs> calamities and obstacles should not be controlling you but rather your action should be stronger and which is built uh, with it should build a defensive shield to protect yourselves from it so this way one can change something negative into positive so he said that calamities and obstacles and shayateen and these problems they should not be dictation giving you dictation they should not be controlling you problems have come your way okay i'll do this i'll leave this a happy occasion have come okay i've changed my mind i'll do this now no the problems should not be dictating you calamities and joy and happiness should not be dictating you you should take dictation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam should be your dictate uh, dictating you things meaning actually because his dictation is flawless full of mercy and compassion uh, to, uh, towards the people so don't be controlled by these things but you should rather your action should be stronger and they should be triggered they should be dictated by allah azza wa jalla and his messenger and uh, timeless wisdom so you should Uh, build that when defensive shield you should train yourself that what you will do in this situation and he said that my way is what our the meaning people who come after the teaching sayyidna abdul wahab at-tazi rahimahullah what he taught sayyidna ahmad ibn idris sayyidna imam sanusi and uh, others awliya and people who come and today if we are conveying say nab dal aziz the bars message if i am saying it conveying it he said this is the my way is the way of your mashayikh and teachers way if you follow them it is as if though you are following me uh, if you do not follow them and you go against them it's as though you are upsetting myself but rather this affects me more he said that i if someone upsets me it doesn't affect me so much if uh in relation to if someone upsets another of actually uh, a person of my representatives because the mashayikh they take things themselves in a different way for others they think take it a different way and then also uh Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sayyid Abdul Aziz the Bab mentions that like I am giving you guidance similarly the birth of the prophet Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam his days are coming um, and uh, he mentioned that the prophet Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam is happy is pleased with those who do actually remember them and but they do remember them properly in the way that actually they should be not actually as shaitan infiltrates people's good deeds like they're going to hajj with riya they become sin they become sinful people are doing jihad with riya they can become sinful people are giving charity with certain doing with for wrong motives that become actually harmful so if a person say don't give charity like this he's not criticizing charity he's not criticizing hajj he's not criticizing knowledge but he's criticizing that wrong action and wrong motive similarly when ulama those ulama haq and those righteous people when they criticize the people who celebrate in a wrong way rather they are hurting the awliya and anbiya they are criticizing their wrong ways in which they celebrate not the maulid itself not the celebration I mean celebration is thankfulness who can say thanking for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a blessing or thanking for awliya allah as a blessing is not good everyone agrees with that but it is it is what form it takes so he uh, rahimahullah he mentioned from the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam that people celebrate my coming for days why should they not celebrate my beloveds around the world but rather it is being ignored and instead they are celebrating the models of shayateens and misguiding them towards darkness so he is giving prophetic that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is happy that even his representative his sahaba the i my ahle bayt ikram the awliya allah meaning their lives are remembered but rather rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the people are 
remembering, they are celebrating shay models of shayateen, sinful people. They came into this life, this is their birthday, this is their uh, anniversary, they are doing that and taking people toward darkness. He وسلم, said, yes, they should celebrate my coming, the coming of my representatives <coughs> and my beloveds <coughs> from Ahle Bayt, Sahaba Ikram, Awli Ikram, up to Day of Judgment and bring by remembering my beloveds, it is as if though you are remembering myself. Rasulullah Sallallahu mentioned that remembering my ahle bayt karam my sahaba karam or awliya of ummat Muhammadiyah. By remembering my beloveds, it is as if though you are remembering myself. And remembering myself, it is as if though you are remembering the Lord, your Lord, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Why should my beloved's occasion be ignored, but rather remember so that one can take heed, lessons, or at least an atom of heed from each occasion? Celebration of that night of 11th Safar be such that everyone remembers him collectively and sending their du'as, doing du'a upon uh, for Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabbaq, uh, this is a, obviously we cannot do much for them. This is a minimum we can send reward and revive their teachings and convey their message. They are more than happy. So, like he sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned uh, that, like I said, each sahaba, each my of my companions are like stars, and whosoever follows a star, they will not be misguided. The friends of Allah are like the indicators and navigators that will detect and direct towards the correct stars from the fake stars. Because there can be fake stars, there can be a person can be deluded which star to follow. He, Ali is saying the, the job of awliya, the, Allah, the stars of guidance, so sahaba, Rizwanul Ali Majmai, and before them, I'm my Ahle Bayt Tahar, they are guidance. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, I am my Ahle Bayt, they are like the vessel or like the ship. He says, so ship and Sahaba are like stars. So you need both things to travel. You need the boat, you will be drowned without it. The stars won't benefit you. And without the, the stars, you won't be actually uh, uh, nowhere to go. But uh, without the awli Allah, you won't know which star to actually to differentiate between fake and real stars. There are other stars, the stars of shaitan as well. You see, this is a football star, this is a pop star, this is a, there are all kinds of stars in this dunya. But they are, there are prophetic stars. So say the awliya Allah, they differentiate, they make distinction for you which stars to follow, which stars are fake stars, they are just actually there. Temporarily, they will take you to hell. So, awliya Allah are like the indicator and navigator. They navigate the ship. They indicate that this is to follow. And they detect the false stars from the real one and from the, um, uh, uh, yes, in between the fake and the real stars. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned, shayateens are fake and their representatives are fake. And they pretend to be stars as well, that make people b believe everyone it is correct, one, whatever one is doing, uh, one as it is easier to discover. So he says shayateens are, and their representatives are the fake, and they pretend to be stars, people follow them, they, they, their hairstyle, their clothing, their way of life, they tend that we are giving you away, and uh, this is also fine. That's what it is. Then he mentioned that just like a magnet is, it automatically pulls towards the metal object and attached itself strongly. Similarly, the friends of Allah are such that they will pull you towards and attach their selves and their own lives in order to direct you towards the right path. Isn't it? The awliya Allah are like magnets, like magnet actually pulls the metal and t keeps them with them. And because if the magnet is there, here now, and the metal is there, it will pull towards its place. And the awliya Allah are like magnet, they are already in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the closeness. So if they will pull metals, others, 
then they will also, if they become attached to the magnet, they are in the same place. So whatever happens with them, they also will benefit from that as well. Sixthly, he mentioned without uh, a right foot, they are going to be a left foot and a person will never walk when they have two left feet, for example. Rather, it will make them difficult to stand and the legs lose the control and balancing the body and they will fall. Similarly, without them, people will fall and are, uh, are falling as well. So, he said that they are actually, awliya Allah are like actually, when you want to travel, one is yourself and you need the other foot actually to travel uh, there actually. So, you have one thing which you will struggle they will give you another footing in with which you can, uh, without actually difficulty, actually travel. Without a gardener, the gardener does not become neat and clean and design, nor the flowers look blossom. Although the uh, flower itself, uh, they look nice, they are good, uh, it feels good to look at them. Similarly, without awliya Allah, a person can never blossom, meaning his spirituality, his tarbiyah, uh, his conduct, his character does not blossom, but rather they will be like a dead tree. So, here Ali Islam gave an um, example of like a garden, a garden, that garden is, which has a gardener, it's kept clean, that is kept neat and things, flowers blossom at their time. Similarly, in this dunya, uh, the awliya Allah are like gardeners and yourselves are like the garden. So if you have a gardener, then it will be neat, clean things and it will also uh, blossom as well. Uh, another, kitne baje hai namaz? Sorry? Seven o'clock. Another <coughs> great personality which was passed was uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu uh, who was a great uh, warrior and he was the Sayyidina Abdullah the Baz said that indeed Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair was the warrior of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu he demonstrated in many battles most notably the last one which made himself a martyr uh, a martyr. Yes, indeed, he anhu, was born in the blessed month of Safar after a year of Hijra. Everyone rejoiced at his birth as the myth of some Jewish people were actually proved false. So he was, uh, it was as though it was uh, when Muslims came and migrated from Mecca to Medina, there was no newborn boys be born. So someone spread this rumor that some people from Jewish clan or sorcerers, <coughs> they have done magic so that no one, they won't actually bear a male child. So he was the first one to be born. So the Muslims were very happy and rejoiced. He was the first one to be born in the Muhajireen after. He has a wonderful life, uh, meaning he spent his childhood with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was the grandson of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, and was a great uh, warrior and a very, very, very pious person and a Sahabi. So Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabba saying some of the lessons from his life and his final battle as just Sayyidina Imam Hussain defended Islam alone. Similarly, the great Ibn Zubair anhu, followed this act and defended Islam by not giving it in. Because Yazid and his people, after martyring Imam Hussein, they came towards Makkah. And in Makkah, Abdullah bin Zubair, he said, I'm not paying any bar or anything to you. And he declared that, I am the companion, I am ruling here. So Yazid sent an army to invade Makkah. That was his, another great sin which he did an army to invade Makkah al Makarma and Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubair in, uh, was for he fortified himself in Makkah al Makarma and defended the city until he was martyred. So this was the story, this was the end of his life, physical life. 
so he was alone as well like imam hussein radiyallahu anhu left alone he didn't have many followers there but he didn't submit to yazid or anything actually like that. so the mother of ibn zubair radiyallahu anha sayyidna asma bin abu bakr, uh, bakr uh, the daughter of uh, sayyidna abu bakr siddiq the mother uh, the sister of sayyida aisha siddiqa was such that she does such a khidma of her father and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the Mount Sore whilst risking her own life and honor. She is the one who was a very young girl at that time when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did hijrah. He was very young, very young, like seven, eight years old. And Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stayed three days in the cave of Sore, actually uh, taking refuge there with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. And there was no one to give them any food or anything like this. See, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to send from Jannah, the Jannah would come. But this dunya is test. Even Rasulullah sallallahu needed to adopt physical means. And uh, he did this to make this as a sunnah so that people just don't actually have foolish ideas. We are doing tawakkal like this and they are not taking care of money. They are not taking care of the proper means and proper... And just saying, this, there's no tawakkul like that. So he, Ali Sallallahu and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, was there. In the end, because they, they suspected that if any adult person goes towards Ghari Sur and think people will say where they're going and it will be known. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq's daughter, uh, Sayyida Asma, she used to go into that cave and provide them actually uh, food and there are others as well. Uh, she also uh, gave um, sh her shawl for the khidma of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq and Rasulullah Sallallahu to tie actually and uh, this was also she gave, was given a title because of that as well. So mashallah she was a blessed woman and her son Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair. Um, Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Daba referring to her that she was the mother and she was alive and could not see at that time when uh, Yazid and Hajjaj bin Yusuf and these evil people they actually invaded Makkah. She was blind and she could not see a very old age in near 100 years of age, 90 years of age. And when uh, she, uh, she was there in Makkah al Makarma and the, uh, her son was martyred and he was hanged. Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubair was hanged on, on a crossroad in Makkah so that people could see uh, the, what uh, this Yazid and Hajjaj bin Yusuf did. So they were just being very ruthless. And he came to uh, his mother. Sayyidina, Sayyidina Asma bin Tabi Bakr, the Hajjaj bin Yusuf and the, the evil ruler like Yazid's representative. And he said to her uh, that look what I've done to your son. Meaning his body was hanging there on the crossroad, on a road, was not even buried. So imagine the feelings of mother. And, uh, she said, you destroyed my son's dunya and he destroyed your akhirah. So that's what, what she said. She said, yes, and he became silent. He couldn't say anything, and that was true. And he knew that I have destroyed my Ahara. She said, you destroyed my son's dunya, and my son has destroyed your Akhira. So you're still a loser. You're not a winner uh, in anything. So she said that um, Sayyidina Abdulaziz Dabar uh, relates from her uh, that that she was a wonderful woman and she said uh, my heart broke to pieces and then felt it was being eaten by the wild beast while the beast crave in it to eat it with their sharp teeth and bite and then chewing it that's what was my feeling i felt this i felt it all in my old age when i saw my son and knowing this would happen but what contained myself is that the blessed face which I used to know and see and got used to and that was my inner strength which was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because she was a sahabiya so she said that is what took me and what kept me uh, consolidated 
So he, she said she's giving a lesson to the Ummah, the lesson to us. She said, five lessons she gave, find your strength and surely every duty, every pain and every suffering will be tender. And that is by giving your trust in the representative of Rasulullah of your time and the trust of Rasulullah will come. He said, because she's saying that like my son Abdullah bin Zubair anhu, was the leader of that time. He was representing. So he was suffering, but everything will be easier to suffer when you are following the Prophet and you have a relationship with him very close. So he said, find your strength and surely every difficulty, every pain, every suffering will be tender. And that is by giving your trust in the person of the time, the person, uh, the teacher of the time, the representative of the time, whoever may be so until the day of judgment. Number two, being a mother is one of the greatest gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give to his servant. He entrusts women with the child, surely we can show our shukr and gratitude at least by teaching them the love of Allah and the love of Rasulullah and love of deen to our children. So he's saying to the mothers, and the women that he made you a mother, this is one of the greatest blessings that he put Jannah under your feet. So it is a great blessing that he has given you that status. So how you can be thankful? Now place your son and daughter to, under the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the khidmah of Deen and in worshiping and serving Allah subhanahu wa taala. Number three. Teach your children the love of Allah and Rasul sallallahu as if though they are persons in your lives and not in the books only. So she said, teach the children the love of Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa It's not as though there's, it's a far-fetched idea in books. Uh, it comes about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran or Rasul uh, is in the seerah or the books only. But teach your children, make them such aware that they are living, they are definitely living personality as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as though they, they are the, uh, he is the model and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the maqsood al-azam. Number four, she said, the way you would talk about your parent to your children, you tell them about your forefather, your parents, your grandfather, this, that, and you, and you mention about your love and respect for them, and you imply you you are upon them teach them so so teach them the love and the care and respect actually of pious righteous people ambiya siddiqin shuhada and salihin because they are like spiritual grandfathers the great way to live i he said i can say is sunnah way this world will end soon so why not adopt the way and get your results in Akhirah? She says, this world will end, all its ways will be end, all models, all lifestyles will end. If this dunya is going to end, all lifestyles will end. Only, she said, follow Sunnah, the Sunnah, the prophet, prophetic lifestyle is going to continue in Akhirah, in Jannah as well. This way it will never die, this lifestyle will never die. The personality, the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu which is the way, will carry on actually. Dunya is just a deception, just covered with layers of deceiving traits. It is a deception, it's like poison, it's like a false thing, but it's covered in layers and layers and it looks very attractive. It has a very good packaging, but a rubbish quality inside it is actually. <clears throat> And then furthermore, Sayyidina Abdulaziz the Ba'ar, <coughs> he said that the Safar uh, month has begun and it's ending as well, obviously it's now it's end. So he said the Safar has begun, have, your, have you started your Safar, Safar, because Safar also with seen it means journey as well. Safar has begun, have you started your Safar, be like this per great personality. Uh, of the Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair and Sayyidina Abdulaziz the Ba'ath said be like this great personality and he gave also five 
pieces of gems and guidance from his life. Said, challenging oneself against the nafs, shayateen, and the, and the evil world, these all give a, uh, gives a taste of poison. He said, challenging oneself against the nafs. So like Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair, he challenged them when he saw evil, when he saw injustice. And he said, so these are like poisons. Uh, so one should challenge, they will destroy you. Number two, defend your body by gaining control of your limbs and turn towards your Lord, just as Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair did by not giving in to their evil command. So he kept his body intact, actually, that it could be uh, martyred and slayed, but not actually it could be uh, given to shayateen or these evil rulers. His radiallahu body was captured and threatened to be mutilated and indeed his hands were being cut off but did not stop worship as he radiallahu demonstrated by doing within his mind and heart. So when he was actually uh, captured and his hands were being cut, he was still uh, doing worship. He was in prayers actually. When the last time came, like Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu, he was in sajda as well. So his hand was being cut, arrows were being thrown, but he was not moving. So he passed away in that state. Have faith without faith, you, are lo you, you, are, you lost, although you may have everything. So Sayyidina Abdul the Zabar says that this is the important, one important lesson which one can learn. Have Iman, protect Iman, without Iman, you lost, you have lost, even if you have everything, every blessing, every name of the world, you still are a loser like Yazid and others who have followed him. They had everything of the world, but without the uh, pleasure of Allah, everything they have lost. And number five, he said, be harsh towards yourself and gentle towards the others, showing them the better version of yourself. So he said, be harsh towards your own self, be harsh upon the nafs and gentle towards the other. Show others the better version of yourself and show yourself, nafs, the harsher version. So every person has an element, he has different personality sometimes. Yeah, there is a goodness, there is tenderness, there is softness and other things. And then there is anger, there is stiffness, there is stubbornness. So he's saying that these two <coughs> personality uh, traits. The first one, show towards other, use it towards other. The gentleness, the good self, the good self, the better version of yourself, deal with others. And the stubbornness, the anger, the hardness, the harshness towards you, yourself and shaitan and nafs. But unfortunately, like he, who <coughs> mentioned, he rahimahullah, Sayyidina Abdul Izzabama, we are doing the opposite. What we do is, the anger, the harshness is mostly shown with other people. And with ourselves, if done, even I've done some crime, I saw compassion upon myself. Oh, I should be forgiven. Oh, I did this because of that. And thing, I missed prayers. Oh, yes, yes this happened. <coughs> All these actually compassion and mercy we are using against the nafs, uh, for nafs. And all harshness, and we, oh, I am out of anger, that person made me angry, he, I can't stand him, etc. Okay, you have these two things in your body, in your mind. There is an element of anger, stubbornness, harshness, strength, he said, and there's gentleness, tenderness, and other things. He said, use this part whilst dealing with the creation, and use the other part toward yourself and the time, and you will benefit. If you do the opposite, then you will be harmed. So if he, rahimahullah, he even gave solution for those people who think they are angry. Oh, I am very uh, angry. I just get actually angry very quickly and I um, become harsh and I am very stubborn oh, and I am very stiff, I am very hard. I have a strong pers uh, personality. Uh, I just lose my actually... Uh, uh, resilience, etc., etc. So the solution is if you have this, use it towards actually yourself. Make a good use of it. 
but the part which is soft, gentle, loving, and thing, keep it for others. So when you are doing with others, this way you are benefiting from both. Actually, these things, <coughs> and that's how actually people have been. Auli Allah, they had these things. They have this element of anger. They are very much. Uh, they are very hard, very you may say die-hard people, but actually towards nafs, shaitan, and evil, not actually towards other people. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab said, Shiddahum fi amrillah, that towards the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was very strong, to execute that towards shaitan, towards evil, evil people, not toward others. Soft. Ruha ma ubaynam. You see, the mention in the Quran, Ma'adabu bin Shaitan, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Allah SWT said, Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah, is the representative of Allah. He is the representative of Allah, truly. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And those people who are really with him, who are really close to him, they are harsh upon the evil people. I want to disagree of the evil people, the deniers, the, the in injustice. رُحَمَا أُبَيْنَهُمْ They are very soft very gentle between themselves. This is a primary quality if you want to see this person is with Rasulullah or is Rasulullah with this person, this quality is a sign. Tarahum rukkaan sujjadai yabtahuna fadlam min Allah wa ridwana. You will see them many praying, inclined towards prayers, salah, sujood, raku, and yabtahuna fadlam min Allah. They just ask the fadl, the ridwan, the pleasure of Allah, as did not seek anything. And see ma hum fi wujuhihim min asar is sujood. There are signs which appear on their faces uh, with because of worship. Their faces have a kind of uh, a light, uh, a kind of actually satisfaction and peace actually. And then Allah SWT mentioned other qualities, but this is also mentioned. In the beginning, first one is this. So these are many of the teachings summarized of the month of Safar uh, and regarding great personality. Subhanakallahu bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Astaghfirullah.